Hello and welcome to my Oceana Bird tier list. I'll be ranking each bird card from Wingspan's Oceana expansion into one of five tiers. These sorts of things are, of course, based on opinion, but I'll do my best to keep things objective. I will be looking at how desirable birds are in both the early and late stages of the game. With that said, let's get into it. So we are starting things off with Abbott's Booby. Very good late game bird. It's, it's one of the best bonus powers in the game, but I'm gonna put it in A, maybe I'll adjust it later. Next bird, we have the Australasian Pippet. Australasian Pippet, you can kind of think of it as two food for conditionally eight victory points. That's pretty decent, but it's nothing special. Australasian Shoveler, um, decent early game, don't really want it late game. It's nothing special, again. Australian Ibis, multiple habitats, I think it's pretty decent. It's the only thing in the game that interacts with the discard pile like this. I think if someone happens to discard a really good bird or something like that, it, it's, a, it's an interesting bird. It's not that powerful, but I would definitely say it at least deserves B. Australian Magpie has an opportunity to get you a lot of points. If you have it in the middle and you're hitting everything, you're getting six powers, um, six effects off of it, and it's effectively 10 victory points for you. And that's decent. It's better than the um, Australasian Pippet, that's for sure. So now the Australian Owlet Nightjar, um, not my favorite. It's kind of like the Sacred Kingfisher, but worse. And it's a pink power. So if it, pink powers by and large are going to completely depend on how many players you play with. I tend to play with either like four, most commonly four, sometimes five, sometimes three. But in those cases, um, pink powers are really good. If you are just playing with your partner or typically with small groups, pink powers are not gonna be very good. And this is unfortunately one of the worst pink powers. I'm gonna say, does it go in F? I think I think it's I think it's really bad. Um, like if you get it early, like cool. But there are so many other things that just literally do its job better. So I would say this is this is a really bad bird overall. Australian Raven. Um, this can be a very solid bird in the late game if you happen to have a food engine. So I would say either A or B. Currently, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. Um, a. An another thing to keep in mind, this is the um, Australian Ibis also had one, but um, this bird does have the omnivore symbol, which is really useful for scoring with nectar. I, I sometimes will use that to like um, decide whether it's I'm going to tip it up to the, the next tier or not. Australian we Australian Australian weed. Australian reed warbler is just a play another bird with an one egg discount. These are very conditional. If you get them in late game, it's you can kind of think of it as like um, two extra victory points this one, but in general, I don't think that they're very good because I would rather find a bird with substance rather than a bird that requires me to have something else going. So these are, I can't put them any higher than C. I don't think they're quite F because sometimes they are just objectively good. But yeah, I'm going to probably be putting these ones in C. Australian Shell Duck. Uh, very nice if you hit it early, but it does just kind of amount to um, one draw, though you can sift a lot. You can effectively look at, in an ideal circumstance, six birds before drawing with this guy, but it does have the nest restriction. So I would say um, overall I like it more than the Australasian Shoveler, but um, does, is that enough to bump it out to B? Probably. Um, I, I quite like finding these. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put it in B. Okay, Australian Zebra Finch. So this is a conditional single victory point. Um, like, it's not bad, but most of the time, um, early game brown powers that you would find like this have some sort of benefit. So for example, tackle card to draw a card. That way you are sifting your hand while also getting a victory point. This one is conditionally giving you one victory point. In my opinion, that's pretty bad. It, it does have a star nest and three eggs, but I don't think that quite redeems it from how underwhelming its brown power is. Black Naughty is a nine point bird with surprisingly like a, a pretty decent brown power for chunky birds. Normally these sorts of big birds don't have good brown powers, but this one is actually usable. A lot of these sorts of big point birds, you just play for their big points, but this is one that you can also use for its brown power because it's pretty good. Black Swan, if you have a lot of big birds, it can be good. It also has two omnivore slots. However, by and large, to me, this amounts to like seven, eight victory points, which is not bad, but it's uh, nothing crazy. I am gonna say this should be C, and maybe Black Naughty shouldn't be up in A. Maybe Australian Raven shouldn't be up in A either. I'll figure that out when I get there. Black Shouldered Kite can conditionally give you three eggs, which is a lot. Most cards will not give you that much value, but it is uh, contingent on the bird feeder playing nice. 
I personally really like this bird. I think it's really good, especially in things that um, where you're using a lot of eggs or you are rarely using your, like you're rarely laying eggs. And so you want to like um, bump up your egg generation. I think it's generally pretty decent. Blythe's Hornbill, if you can get it to go off, it it can be a lot of points for you. It's much like the Australian Raven, seven point body with a power that can get you a lot. I know that there are quite a few um, tree nests that have four egg slots. And another nice thing about Blythe's Hornbill is if you have specifically an egg engine and you are running out of egg slots in the late game, playing Blythe's Hornbill to open up more egg slots while also giving you those tucked cards, really powerful. Definitely at least A tier in my opinion. Rolga. Um, this is one of my favorite birds because I had a very fun car draw engine with him the first time I encountered it, but um, overall it is draw two, which is very, very effective. Of course, someone else could slay an egg. That is less effective the more players you have, but in a two player game that is quite a downside. But in general, drawing two, even though you don't um, get to sift at all like the uh, Australian shell deck, is quite strong. I would say either B or A, and it has an omnivore symbol, and it's my favorite bird, so it's going in A. Brown Falcon is one of the most consistent skull power cards in the game. There are tons and tons of birds that cost either a grub or a rat, and this one goes off quite often. Like, I've had I've had the Brown Falcon in my opening hand and be like, okay, okay, I'm gonna keep this because I don't have any of the tree birds. And so some, sometimes um, just having all three habitats is a really big bonus. Budrigger is a consistent victory point and you can, um, if you have it in the water or like in the egg row with Franklin's goal or something, you can, um, it can also help you get rid of troublesome cards you don't want other people to draw. But it is just zero points, brown power, gain one victory point. But it is also a really cheap bird that can go in any habitat. So I would say it's at least C in that regard. Um, you can, it's, it's probably B. Um, I'm gonna put it in B tier. Cockatiel. Um, it's l a little bit like Budrigger. It inter inter interacts with the tray. You get one victory point, but you have to spend a wheat. Why would you want Cockatiel when you can get something like Canada Goose or Black, -well B Black Bellied Whistling Duck? There's, It's just like, sure, it only costs one. It can go anywhere, but this bird's not good. Count Raggy's Bird of Paradise. Very fun name. Uh, very colorful. Um, can't see it with my images, of course, because copyright. But... Um, seven points and an all right brown power. It's you're mostly using it for seven points. I think um, that's mediocre. Um, most of, most of the birds, in my opinion, most of the birds that are like really just like hey, I'm a bunch of points. Those are um, I put them in C because you really only will actively draw those cards in like. Um, round three or four, and even then there are better cards that you could get. For example, you could get something like uh, Atlantic Puffin, or you could get um, often even just like a bonus, like a bird that will give you bonus cards that's like five victory points, like Painted Bunting for example. Oftentimes, if your bonus is getting you like three to four victory points, it's netting you the same. So, and it has a chance to be more, it also has a chance to be less, but I think by and large these things that are kind of just big um, points are not that good. Crested Pigeon, however, um, there are a lot of things where you, that can lead to you ending up with excess wheat, and Crested Pigeon capitalizes on that while also being cheap. I think it's at least B tier. Crimson Chat? This bird is interesting, because you are spending a food to only get one victory point, and like, Cockatiel's garbage, right? But one of the interesting things you can do with Crimson Chat is you can discard a Nectar, and then it'll go in your spent Nectar spot. So you can actually use this guy to pump nectar in and guarantee you're winning whatever ha um, the grassland nectar spot. So it's at least better than cockatiel. It's also uh, four points and more flexible food cost and more flexible food. Eastern Rosella um, gives you a food advantage, and one of the really cool things about it is it can go in the egg row. So if you have a, if you have an egg engine going and you don't have anything that gives you food, well, just put an Eastern Rosella in there and you are golden. It might even be A. Like, I I just have not seen this bird that often, but honestly, the fact that you can put it in the grasslands and that it gives you two food, that's pretty good. I'm gonna put it in A tier. Eastern Whitbird. This is pretty much average. It's, um, yeah, this is, this is nothing special. Emu is a very odd bird. It's very expensive for a mediocre brown power and mediocre bird points, but it has a ton of egg slots and can go anywhere. Um, I've never really used it to great effect, but I've also never had it with something like uh, Black Bellied Whistling Duck or Canada Goose. So, I don't know. Um, I think it's probably about average. It is very nice that it can go anywhere.
Okay, so Gala says um, get two victory points. That's very good. Sure, someone else gains a wheat, usually, but the fact that it just gives you two victory points is very, very good. Definitely an S-tier bird. Okay, golden-headed Sistacola. Um, that's just C tier, just like the uh, previous one we've seen. Gold's Finch is basically spend a turn playing a bird that does nothing to play a bird for free later. Um, well, for like without an action, it's not great, not bad. Um, the the way I think of it is, when you draw this bird, would you have preferred to draw a different bird? And the answer for me is usually yes. So. I don't think it's that good. Do you remember the Australasian Shoveler? Well, Green Pygmy Goose is basically just a slightly better version of that. You get to choose which card you keep of two, and the other one goes to another player. So this is definitely better, um, though I think um, the difference is not that much. It's 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 all right. Gray Butcher Bird. Um, I played this game one time with my dad, and he got this bird early in the game, and he. Um, like activated it like maybe eight or nine times and maybe like nearly all of those activations it succeeded and I think that's because in the base game it wasn't particularly common for birds to have wingspan less than 40 centimeters with the expansions that the balance has shifted a little bit and that's a lot more common than I thought so it's basically a chance to get two victory points which is pretty solid I think it's at least B um, I don't think it goes in S though. It does have an omnivore symbol though, so keep that in mind. Ray Shrike Thrush. Um, this is a very cheap bird, and I often uh, think it sucks just by virtue of it being a um, thing, a uh, skull power with rats, and most of those are bad. But this one, you can literally take all the rats, and early game, that's kind of decent, especially if you have something like Grain Horde Owl. I, get, I know it's not particularly common, but it can get you quite a bit of food. It does only go in the trees though, but. Um, early game, I'd be pretty happy to see this, honestly. I'll put it- I'll put it up here. So, Grey Teal, it is Sifting, Draw, or Tuck. And that's not bad. Um, it's definitely pretty- pretty solid, I would say, up here. Grey Warbler, just another one-egg discount guy. Down in C tier. Grey-Headed Mannequin is a lot like Gold's Finch, but you get one-egg discount, though it is one less victory point. Same cost, um, very similar- very similar effects. I'm gonna put it in the same spot. Horsefield's Bronze Cuckoo, uh, second pink power we've seen. Definitely completely depends on um, how many other players there are and what they're doing. I've had games where I have an egg engine and other people have cards like this and they just get tons and tons of free eggs. I think this one, this one's definitely better than the uh, Nightjar, so I'm gonna put it in... I mean, it's... No, because I think this is one of the worst um, egg-laying pink powers, because there are some that like lay egg, lay one egg on this bird, lay one egg on a certain nest type, and usually that's easier to do than getting something with a wingspan of 30 or less. So, Horsefield's Bushlark. This is um, a lot like the Canada Goose and that sort of thing. Pretty good. There's a lot of things that care about wheat, and this giving you eggs instead is good. However, it only has two egg slots, which means you have to use those eggs again before doing anything. Um, so it is a very powerful effect, and I want to put it in A, but the fact that it only has two X slots means I can't really- do, I- I won't do that. Okay, so now let's talk about the KK Po. This one is Sifting b Bonus, and it's honestly getting this late game very good, in my opinion. Um, you can- by drawing four bonus cards, you can almost guarantee that with one of them you're going to be getting eight points. So you can kind of think of this as a two food, 12 point bird. Very good, in my opinion. Kia, similarly, loves bonus cards and is one of the better ones. You can use Kia to pump nectar, and that's really good in addition to being able to sift for bonus cards. I think, I mean, it's better than average. I think Kia's, I think Kia's, yeah, it's it's above B. It's it's an A tier bird. It's, it's a good bird. Kelpgul, similar to, like, Kia, you can use it to pump uh, nectar, and you can also use it if you have a food engine to draw as many cards as you need. It's also just six points for... Uh, two food, one of which is an omnivore symbol. Honestly, Kelpkul, like, it doesn't look that impressive, but it's it's a pretty good bird. Kareru is conditional nectar gain. Um, it's not bad, it's not amazing. I'm gonna say it's B tier. Korimako is kind of weird. If we compare it to Kareru, which we just saw, it's um, one more food for an arguably 
it's it's a different power but it's like arguably better because usually um i mean you activate it when you get food and that way you can treat knack um treat rats as nectar which is pretty solid but it, it it does cost one more food and you do like need to get rats and you can't just get a nectar for free so i'm gonna say it's about the same Laughing Kookaburra lets you get food consistently in any row, and I think that's pretty good. It's mm, maybe not quite A, because you can't get something like nectar, and it, you can't really rely on it as your only source of food, but just being able to get any amount of food in other rows, pretty good. I'll say it's B. Lesser Frigate Bird is... Hmm. Lester Frigate Bird is a lot like Black Naughty. It's 9 points, and it also has a usable brown power. And while the effect itself is useful, it's um, symmetric. Okay, Lewin's Honey Eater, gain a nectar. We've in, um, gain a nectar only in the trees. We've seen that many times. I mean, I guess it's about on par with the other nectar ones in that case. I'll put it there. Little Penguin. If we were rating based on cu cuteness, easiest here. However, we are not. And frankly, it is. I mean, it's seven points and a star nest um, with a pretty. D, like an all right brown power. I've had times where this has gotten me four fish in one activation. I've had times where I get one fish in three activations. So it's uh, very variable. I am going to say it's a B tier bird. We have now run out of space in B tier. So I'm going to go ahead and condense all the birds that we've previously seen. And uh, that way we can keep going. Little Pied Cormorant, it's good points for the end of the game, but doesn't really do anything else. Basically, Magpie Lark is pretty similar to Gold's Finch, but um, there's a lot more restrictions. And overall, it's, I mean, it's, it still ends up being about the same because you can plan around it, but it's a, like a little bit weaker, but not enough to put in an F, in my opinion. Major Mitchell's Cockatoo. Getting cards in either of these rows can be pretty difficult. I use it a fair bit, but I often wish I had something better. I think it's it's either B or C. Um, I'm gonna... We'll, we'll put it in B. I th you can definitely make an argument for it either way. Malifal is a lot like the Little Pied Cormorant, but it does have an omnivore symbol and a ton of egg slots, egg slots which means it's a little more useful early on, but overall still about the same thing. Alright, now we have the Mage Duck. This card is an absolute powerhouse. Not only does it have two omnivore symbols, it has one of the best brown powers in the game in my opinion. So this guy, you just get a tucking machine and you get so, so many victory points in the water row. I, this is absolutely an S tier bird in my opinion. Many colored fruit dove giving you two cherries, which is effectively one food. That amounts to what a lot of tree birds do. Um, it's not like noticeably bad, which is really all I'm putting in F tier. Um, but it's nothing, nothing good. Masked Lapwing. This card is really awkward because early game, which is when you would gain the most from the, this food, typically, you would prefer to get something with a good brown power. And late game, you don't want to take a turn playing a one bird point bird that doesn't like play another bird. So like sure the power is okay if you think about it in a vacuum but in general when would you actually want this bird the answer for me is pretty much never mistletoe bird um just like many of the nectar birds we have seen it does have a star nest and four slots which comes in handy for end of round goals quite a bit um and yeah we'll we'll, we'll put it up there musk duck is a lot like the um other drawing ones we've seen but it is quite cheap but um, yeah, I would say it's about average. New Holland Honey Eater. Um, it can fairly consistently, depending on um, what other players are doing, get you food in the grasslands. I think this is a pretty good bird, especially because it's cheap. If you get this guy early, I'm, ge I'm generally pretty happy to see him, so. All right, now we have Noisy Miner. This bird can get you three victory points per turn, um, but of course you have to have the card to do it, but in addition to that, it can also be your entire egg laying. If you just put this guy in your tree, you need to activate your egg row at all as long as you have enough cards to feed him. So, highly recommend S tier bird. North Island Brown Kiwi is a pretty similar to KK Po. You um, pretty much guarantee that you will be getting at least one really good bonus card, but um, with North Island Brown Kiwi, you keep two, but you also have to discard one you currently have. So. I think um, there have been many times when I pick them up because I'm like, oh, it's a super good bonus card bird, right? But then um, I only have the one bonus card and I already have like maybe four points toward it. So um, it's it's worse. It, it's a, like, 
it's still fantastic and a very, very good bonus bird. I, I think it's um, definitely an A tier bird. Hey, look, it's a slightly different Malifal. Cool. Pacific Black Duck is a little bit different than these end of uh, end of game lay egg birds, but it is also an end of game lay lay egg bird. It just has different qualifications. It doesn't matter about nest types, but you have to have laid enough eggs for it to matter. And I don't know. It's um about the same in my opinion. This guy is like a conditional seven eight victory points, but he does come with an omnivore symbol, which is nice. Peaceful Dove. It's nothing crazy, but it can definitely help out with eggs a lot. And since it is wheat instead of any other food type, I think it's a little bit better because that's more plentiful. Pescat's Parrot. Conditional Nectar Gain. I, I think it's about the same as Mistletoe Bird, so what do you do? Pheasant Cocal is one of the best iterations of when other players lay eggs, lay an egg, because it does it on itself, so you don't need any other bird to set it up. I think it's a very good bird, but of course it's a pink power, so it depends on how many players and how often they're laying eggs. Um, but in general, this is like the best of that archetype in my opinion, or one of them at least. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a pink ear duck, very similar to Pygmy Goose, gonna put it in the same place. Plains Wanderer is another absolutely fantastic bonus card bird. You get a ton of sifting and a decent body as well, um, though of course you have to be playing it late game so that you get all the bon uh, benefit from it. Overall, it's pretty good, and a lot of these good bonus birds all have different strengths and weaknesses, but they all kind of balance out to be around A in my opinion. They're nothing as warping as S tier birds, but they are very powerful. All right. Uh, Princess Stephanie's Estrampia, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that one. Um, laying eggs in the trees, solid. Um, it's also six points for two food. It's nothing like insane, but it's definitely an efficient bird, better than average, I would say. Pukeko, um, if you compare this to the bird we just talked about, it's an additional food for less points for a less good brown power. I would almost always prefer to have like a blackbird instead of Pukeko because that way you're getting an additional victor point from the tuck. Rainbow Lorikeet. This is a really good bird. So sure, you are discarding a nectar to get two foods, which can potentially be a nectar. So you can think of it in that it gives you only one nectar. However, um, the main thing with Rainbow Lorikeet is since you're discarding it, it's going to the spent nectar spot, which means having this bird, especially like the earlier you get it, the better, um, you guarantee that you are winning the nectar in the trees, in addition to getting food. And I think this is an A tier bird. Red Waddle Bird is so very specific. Um, I think that it is so rare to get this bird to be effective that it has got to be an F. It does have two nectar costs, which is sometimes good if you need to win nectar in the trees, but its power is just so underwhelming. You are usually losing nectar on this bird and it does nothing once you play it. It's just, it's sad. Red-backed Fairy Wren is like all these egg-laying birds, except that its power is a little less useful, but to compensate it is a star nest and has more points. It's about the same power level in my opinion. Conditional food gain in the trees is kind of sucky. I have to decide how I'm how I'm weighting these tiers because this is a conditional single grub in the trees where you're usually getting choices of a lot of food. This is bad, right? This is yeah, this is bad. It's con I mean, it being conditional is unfortunate. Like I think yeah. No, I would prefer to have nearly every other tree bird than this. This is, it's pretty sucky, yeah. Rednecked Avocet. Um, this is, if you compare it to the Robin, which we just talked about, um, the main differences are that it is um, to the left or right, which means it's much more consistent, and it can go in the water, which is a lot better. To offer resources are amazing in wingspan, that's what you want to go for, but it's still nothing crazy. You're only getting a grub, um, but... I mean, it's like basically every time you activate it, you get a grub. I don't know. That's, that's a lot like Laughing Kookaburra, but it's less good. Uh, B or C? Probably just C. Red-winged Parrot is so incredibly versatile. It can go anywhere. It can give you food or it can give you eggs. It does everything. And honestly, unless you already have your engine completely set up, I can't really think of a reason why I wouldn't want this bird. It's a solid bird in my opinion. Regent Bowerbird is symmetric grub gain. Uh, you can put it in the, in the grasslands, but still not great. Um, I'll say see. Royal Spoonbill, um, nest-based card draw, C tier bird. Rufus Night Heron, it's just so average. It has an 
all right skull power. It has, it's only two food, it's five points. I just, I don't know when I would prefer to see this bird over any other bird. Because you don't really want it late game, you don't really want it early game. When do you want it? Not, not really. I, I don't really want it. I don't want it. Rufus Owl, it's seven points, so it is at least a little bit useful late game. The um, power is also consistent, which means um, you can pretty consistently get um, at least one victory point from it. So it's it's solid, I guess. Rufus Bandit Honey Eater is pretty weak, in my opinion. You'd prefer to have something that just gave you food. Sure, getting a nectar in exchange for grub is good, but I would prefer to have uh, just gain something instead. I think this is a pretty bad bird. Sacred Kingfisher. Some people might um, debate with me on this, but I think that this is one of the strongest birds in the game. If you play, like, I, so I, I normally play in groups of like four, sometimes three or sometimes five, but um, this bird, if you get it out early um, and you have like maybe some other source of food, this guy will get you a food consistently, like every round for the most part. It is so, so good. And you get to pick which food, it's honest, and it's so cheap, and it goes anywhere. Sacred Kingfisher is just a fantastic bird. Like, all of its stats is just kind of crazy. Like, the only thing that it's bad about is its uh, victory points, but it has fantastic egg slots, can go anywhere, low food cost, and flexible power. Really, really good. Silver Eye is food gain you can put anywhere, which is honestly pretty decent. It is a symmetric effect though, which makes it a little worse. I, I would prefer to have this over something like the Redneck Avocet. I'll, I'll put it in B. I think that's fair. Wow, uh, South Island Robin. I uh, did not know this bird existed, which is probably because every time I've read the power, I've been like, man, that's bad. Even if it did, even if this bird said May Cash, I would still say it's very weak. It would be, you know, a little better than the Robin then. It is still maybe a little better than the Robin because it can go in the grasslands, but this is not a good word. Southern Cassowary is not as good as these sorts of birds. It's something that you use to capitalize on having something good, low cost. Overall, it's a, it's a solid pick. Spangled Drongo is um, very much like the Sacred Kingfisher. Main downside is that it's a lot harder to get out because it's got a nectar cost and overall three food, but it means that you are um, pretty consistently going to win a lot of the uh, nectars and the habitats. Fantastic bird. If you have not played a game with a lot of players and Spangled Drongo, then maybe you won't see it, but if you have, you know what I'm talking about. Splendid Fairy Run is another one of the game end uh, lay eggs, and most of these have been fairly balanced, and this one is no uh, exception. Spotless Crick is one food for six points, so I can't, I can't really put it any lower than C, so we'll just do this. Stubble Quail, um, a lot like the Australian Raven we saw earlier, if you have excess food, you can use this late game to cash in with bit more victory points. Additionally, you can also use it to pump your grasslands full of nectar. It's it's definitely better than average. I don't know. It, it doesn't belong in A. It, it's definitely a B tier bird. Silver Crested Cockatoo is in some ways better than, in some ways worse than Major Mitchell's Cockatoo. I think overall they end up both in B tier. Superb Lyrebird completely depends on what your neighbor is doing. I had one game where I was copying a Chipping Sparrow in the trees and I was super happy. I've also had games where they just don't have anything in the trees for a while and my Superb Lyrebird is not doing anything. So very variable bird, but overall having the flexibility to copy multiple brown powers and theoretically if you're playing with um, good players then anything, any brown powers they have in their trees will be good, but there is that chance that, you know, they'll have ravens and they just won't need brown powers in their trees or whatever, so it is, of course has risk, but overall pretty solid bird. Tony Frogmouth is not very good. You, you don't want this bird early in the game and you don't want this bird in the late game. It just doesn't, is, it doesn't do enough to warrant being chosen, in my opinion. Tui is um, very similar to Superb Lyrebird. Uh, of course, you know, slight stat differences, but similar brown powers. Um, same, same rationale for being B. Wedgetailed Eagle is honestly pretty solid. It is seven points. This is better than a fair few of the endgame birds, in my opinion. I think it's B. You can, you can definitely argue that it's C. I would not contest that. I'll, I'll be generous and give it B. Welcome Swallow overall is basically 
four to five victory points, definitely a C tier. White bellied sea eagle. I prefer it like a little bit less over the wet shelled eagle, but they're very similar. But I'm also looking at Rufus Owl again and being like, you know, I think this bird should maybe be B. Yeah, because I mean, these are all very similar birds. Three food costs, seven points. Brown power that will average about one point per turn. Rufus Owl can be uh, there. White breasted wood swallow. When played, give you egg. Can be really useful late game if you are um, just trying to play birds and you don't have enough eggs. By that point in the game, you're probably laying four eggs with it. So it's like seven points. And it's also immediately giving you eggs rather than these game end powers. So I think it's quite a bit better. Um, I am going to go ahead and put it in B. White faced heron. This is, again, very similar to uh, these eagles and the Rufus Owl. It's a lot of victory points and a brown power that consistently will get you around one victory, uh, victory point or so. So I'm going to put it in B as well. Willy Wagtail, we've seen a bunch of these nest specific drawing cards, but Willy Wagtail is very different because it can go anywhere. And that is so, so important. It also has an omnivore symbol and five egg slots. This is just a really good bird. I love seeing this guy early because being able to put this guy in the trees or the grasslands and be able to get consistent sifting drawing and it's just is really good. Rybill is, in my opinion, going to be the first um, and only of these Oceana birds, S tier bonus card bird. Pretty often with Rival, you'll be looking at between eight to 10 vic um, victory points just from the bonus card. So I think this guy is way up there. So much sifting, very, very good. Well, this is the completed Oceana bird tier list. Please note I've only ordered the S tier birds. The rest are just in whatever order. Timestamps for each individual bird are in the description below, as is this tier list in image format. Thank you all for watching and have a fantastic day.